what's going on on the roads, uh, what is happening with Uber, and with me, of course, I'm sure you can uh, recognize <laughs> this very <laughs> uh, recognizable, recognize this very recognizable face, uh, James Deacon. Uh, James, let's talk about uh, what's going on. Uh, um, so Monday night, six o'clock, LTFRP issues an order, suspension order. Uh, Uber responds by saying, "Tuloy lang yung operation sila." Uh, and then they file an MR the next day. Uh, of course, up in arms at LDFRP. Oh, and why can how can you operate? No? Suspend it, etc. Anyway, by Tuesday night, they deny the MR. Um, let's begin so we'll with this. With this no? So, kumbaga, we're beyond the, the discussion point about um, what kind of an alternative Grab and well, Uber first, and then Grab uh, provide, uh, given the state of the uh, mass transit system. Um, but there's also something to be said about all of the things, because that's what LTF is saying. Because it is a moot No, it's definitely a moot point already. When we talk about the service that they provide, even the even the opposition will agree that it's a better service. But you're, you bring up a good point about rules are rules. And I think if, if Uber really did either deliberately or not deliberately, but they broke the rules, then they should be penalized. I think the issue here is it should be the TNC and not the TNBS and the driving public. You should be able to separate the two. Um, they do have an option in the in the penalties to give them a monetary fine. They did it the first time with the five million. Yeah. So, I mean, theoretically, what's stopping them from doing another five million or even 10 million or, or six or million? Or no matter so, how much it's going to cost. Because no now, matter, yeah, yeah, the Uber Asia Pacific is talking about saying yeah, because at the end, why are you going to hold the entire congregation responsible for what the priest did? I mean, we, we're, we're, we went there in good faith. I'm, I, as a writer, I use it in good faith. Um, I respect the, the LTFRB's position here as a regulatory board that they have to do what they have to do. Um, I just think that they're a little bit myopic with their view of the law. And if you want to hold people to the letter of the law, then you should also hold yourselves to the letter of the law. And that's where I think the outrage is coming from. People, it's like, don't be such sticklers if you yourself are turning a blind eye to all of these thousands of complaints of cab drivers, thousands of complaints of jeepneys, UVs, buses, etc. So why the laser focus on Uber? Why that? Not to say that they don't, like I said, I'm not here to defend Uber. If they did something wrong, find them do that, but if you're going to take that stand about being the law is the law and must apply to all, then it really should apply to all. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's talk James about uh, the kind of reaction that we saw on social media. Social media and I'm sure you yourself have been getting uh, messages from people. How people are reacting, not just reactions, huh? not, not just whether or not to do us or what was their experience? Let's talk about the Monday evening when uh, they, they went uh, operations were suspended and then what kind of an effect, what kind of impact that had? Uh, a lot because I was getting messages from people saying that um, everyone's, ex everyone's extorting and taking advantage of the situation. Um, sadly, even the other PNBSs uh, that were like we're using the opportunity because it's such a well I was getting screen grabs and let's just let's just take this with a grain of salt because I have no way of verifying it but you, you I was literally getting hundreds of screen grabs of text messages between um, drivers that were from uh, grab that were sort of saying Sige, we'll take you but kailangan idagdag yung ano or double or whatever and they're uh, and they're fighting they ask for a double because they can see the destination so they're like saying well um, but you, they can't the, the uber driver cannot see no the uber destination. uber supposedly can't see the destination but supposedly grab can't see the destination mm -hmm. so the complaints that i'm getting from the public are like some some unscrupulous and this is not a represent this is, shouldn't reflect on the entire company but there are unscrupulous operators out there that are taking advantage of the situation by saying if you double it, I'll take you to where you need to go. Because we don't go back there. We don't have any other trips. And that, that, that sounds how that taxi, sounds very taxi, taxi yeah. driver. It sounds exactly like the cab culture. And we don't, that's the whole point of TNBS. Once again, it's not the whole company, but there are always going to be people who take advantage of that. You also have, well, the cab drivers have also had a field day as well. I got a lot of complaints about that. And then the parking situation. So people are saying, fire on there is no real effect or if nobody really could measure the effect on the road because people are always saying that these TNCs cause traffic. 
But parking, people are saying, wow, all of a sudden I'm noticing it because people are bringing their private cars. Remember, when you talk about the private cars uh, solution, that the effect that PNCs have on private cars, it's not just the volume on the road, you're talking about the volume parking. Because you can't all say, like one Uber or Grab should take about 15 to 20 people a day, roughly, if he's working hard, maybe more. You're not taking 20 vehicles off the road because they're not all 20 riding at the same time, unless you're Uber pool. But those are 20 cars that have been parked in a parking space. Now, it's just one. That's the real advantage of uh, yeah. these uh, ride sharing. Okay. Let's talk more about what people are saying on social media. So, uh, the reaction, so, you know, one of the things we do as journalists, we try to see, we can ask the reaction of are people they're mad. angry? Are oh, people, they're mad. No, are, because they're mad. 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 Because yeah, LTFRB go, you know, penalize Uber for that, you know, uh, salana nila yan, may, may mga ganun. Meron, meron. So, and then, not only that, it's not just reaction, it's also, you know, they talk about, uh, ah, kasi may papasok na ibang company, or, uh, ah, kasi, you know, the, this person is behind Uber, you know, this, yeah, I think you have to sort of like anything, find find the, there's a extremes on both sides. You're going to get the people who are just like, because we built up a dependency on it. When you build up a dependency, and especially when you have children and people who are more vulnerable, women, etc., your wives, etc., they're using it. And you got used to it for the last couple of years. People are outraged because they don't. And of course you don't want to take regular taxes. No, because you know what, and, and this is what I brought up in the Senate hearing. Is they never competed because that profile of the Uber and Grab rider, especially the, the premium ones, they, they weren't taking cabs before Uber and they won't take a cab after they close them down. That was never in the equation. The all option that they would have would be another car, a private car. So I don't see why the cabs feel threatened here. Um, they're mad because they don't see the sense in it. And when you have a perfectly good solution with no actual reasonable or logical explanation as to why we get affected, if the parents fight, that's fine. Just don't affect the kids. And that's what's happening here. The, the giants are clashing, the LVFRB and, and Uber. And we understand that. Everyone should respect the law. I agree with that. But why can't they be fined in an administrative capacity? Don't disrupt the service to the public. And I think Senator Grace Paul has been making, making this point very, very clear. Yeah. Okay. Well, very briefly, um, before the meeting this morning at the Senate, uh, the uh, Asia Pacific Denver Uber was in so many words, apologizing to the LTFRB, to uh, Martin Belgra. Uh, very, I know, very, yung talang nagpakumba ba? He lowered, yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, you know, I mean, I, I was trying to piece the story together, and um, they really did admit to making a, a mistake here when they accepted the other, well, I think there were two cars that they accepted, mm -hmm. well, that they were caught, right? Yeah. Um, on Uber's side, their position was, we didn't really, you can say that we were just flouting the law, we were just be, being in contempt, etc. But their point was, don't add any more cars mm, onto yeah. the, the road. And they were saying, well, we accepted the application, but we didn't activate them. So, major, we're arguing now, is it semantics, is it legal terms, activation versus accreditation. Kung somebody applies in your office and you don't actually have space to hire them, but hey, leave us with your resume and we'll keep it here. In case something opens up, we'll call you. And I think that's what Uber was banking on, is that they weren't actually being quite um, defiant of the law. But the other side, naman, LTFRB, were looking at, major philosopher, yeah. We told you, don't add more cars. And they said, if these cars took a ride, we would accept it. But we never allowed them to take a ride. That's their argument. LTFRB are also not correct when they say, your competitors understood it, why not you? Mm -hmm. So I get that. So at the end, Uber definitely made a mistake here, whether it was deliberate or not deliberate. They did not follow the order. And by all means, they should be penalized. But we keep going back to it, just penalize the TNCs. Not the TNBS, they had nothing to do with this. Not the riding public, they have nothing to do with this. Don't affect something, especially that we're in the middle of a transport crisis. And here's a transport solution. You need to also bend. The, the law is there, but there's also a little bit of interpretation. We can't be so myopic in the interpretation of the law because we, we're just going to paralyze ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to have a little give and take. Okay. All right. That's uh, my opinion, of yeah. course.
very long discussion. <laughs> it, it, it they'll have to join us for the rest of it yeah. because there's, there's a whole lot to talk yeah. about here. Oh, and well, you'll be on Newsnight also. I will at be. At 6 o'clock. Of course, that's a top story. So we'll see you on Newsnight at 6 p.m. here on CNN 15.